The breaking news to begin this hour from the Vatican, the official confirmation Pope Francis will visit Canada this summer. The days in this country, July the 24th through to July the 29th. This is confirmation of what CBC News has been reporting for some time. And we know the Pope will make stops now in Edmonton, in Quebec City, and in Iqaluit. Let's bring in Olivia Stefanovic, who has been covering this throughout and is with us this morning on what is a important confirmation and an important step in the journey of reconciliation. What have we learned this morning, Olivia? Well, Heather, there's been so much anticipation about this announcement. And finally, today, we do have confirmation from the Vatican that Pope Francis will be coming to Canada and visiting Edmonton, Quebec City, and Iqaluit from July 24th until the 29th. Uh, the Vatican did post that the Pope will also be traveling on the 30th, and that's because he will be going from Canada back to Rome. Now, CBC News, as you, as you mentioned, previously reported on these three cities as being under strong consideration for this upcoming papal visit. And it is expected that the Pope may visit more communities, not just these three locations. And that's because we understand there are other locations close to these three cities that are being discussed as being part of the Pope's final itinerary, which will be released closer to when this visit is expected to happen. So, for example, we heard that Pope Francis, when he made his final speech to First Nations Inuit and Métis delegates at the beginning of April, he mentioned Lac St. Anne. He wants to go visit those pilgrimage grounds in Alberta, that's close to Edmonton, and it's expected the Pope will make that trip, that day trip perhaps, once he's in Edmonton. And we understand from conversations we've had with sources as well, Heather, that the Pope may go to Ermskin Cree Nation, that's a First Nation just south of Edmonton, that's being under a strong consideration right now for the Pope's upcoming trip. These are, the, these are the kinds of specifics then, Olivia, that we'll hear about in the days to come as they work those out with uh, also uh, various representatives of the Indigenous delegations. I want to bring in a picture of the Pope going back just to earlier this month in a wheelchair. His mobility is a concern, as is his age and his health overall. How is that being taken into account, Olivia? Heather, this is a major concern for the Vatican and church officials here in Canada, and it's partly why only three cities, Canadian cities, have been announced for this upcoming trip. The Pope suffers from a chronic nerve condition called sciatica. It affects his lower back down to his legs, and there was a recent flare-up in which, as you can see, he used a wheelchair for the first time, and he also postponed a trip to Lebanon, which was scheduled for next month. So no one wants to see the Pope cancel this trip to Canada, and that's why the church officials say they've uh, planned this, this trip to Canada strategically, so he can visit these central hubs representing northern, eastern, and western Canada. And instead of the Pope going all across the country to visit people, the, the idea here is that they will have residential school survivors coming to visit him, and as well as people from across the country, Heather. This is the confirmation, as you say, Olivia, that uh, the Indigenous delegations would have been looking for after that meeting on April the 1st. Mm -hmm. Such emotion at that time and such optimism for what will happen when the Pope comes to Canada. What is the expectation for the visit? Well, Heather, there's a lot of expectations. You know, there's people calling for reparations for the church to pay uh, money to residential school survivors. But I think that the biggest thing that people are expecting, at the very least, they would like Pope Francis to issue a formal apology for the Roman Catholic Church's role in running the majority of residential schools here in Canada. The Pope, when he initially apologized to survivors and First Nations, First Nations, Inuit, and Métis uh, leaders at the Vatican. He apologized for the deplorable conduct of some church members, not for the church's role. So there is a high expectation and demand that the Pope will issue a more a formal apology once he's here in Canada. And this is a key recommendation from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, Heather, that many people demand Pope Francis will fulfill once he's here in Canada. From the 24th to the 29th of July, as we now know, Olivia Stefanovic, thank you very much.